The client asked me if there's a way to do a session duration conversion in GA4 like there is in Universal Analytics. So in Universal Analytics, you can say, I want a conversion or a goal conversion to happen when somebody spends more than a certain amount of time on, on your website. There isn't a built-in conversion for that in GA4. In fact, the only built-in conversion that, that you get with GA4 is a purchase conversion. Everything else you have to set up. And there isn't really an event that you can trigger that triggers after a certain amount of session duration. I figured out a way to do it using a technique that uh, Jude Nwachukwu describes in this Analytics Mania post. He's talking about doing a pages per session conversion, but I was able to adapt his code to do the same thing for session duration. So what it involves is creating a custom HTML tag in Tag Manager that sets a cookie that keeps track of the amount of time that a user's on a website and then fires an event after a certain threshold. And then that event you use as a trigger in Tag Manager. And then you send an event to GA4 saying the person sent that a certain, spent a certain amount of time and you define that as a conversion. Okay, so let's just look at this script here. The, so a custom HTML script is going to execute on the page. Uh, and you, you can set it via Tag Manager uh, and then set whatever triggers you want. And, and uh, the, the JavaScript itself executes in the browser when you do the custom H, when you put it in a custom HTML tag. That's important because we're going to use cookies again to keep track of, of session duration. And by having it execute in the browser, those can be first party cookies which is um, critical for getting around any sort of cookie blocking. Okay, so there's a little script that's exactly copied from Jude's um, code, which is gets the cookie, uh, and then below we'll parse values from the cookie. Um, I'm, I, won't, I won't go into this in detail, but it's just using built-in um, method, JavaScript methods that can get a cookie from the, the browser sort of the meat of the code is down here I'm creating um, well I'm creating two variables which are getting a GTM session start cookie and a GTM session threshold cookie below in the code I'll be creating these these they don't exist uh, these are not stand like um, we have to create those to get them in this case I'm getting them before they're necessarily created which will mean that they're um, null values until we've created these cookies and I'll be checking to see whether or not they exist. I then I, I do a new date and then a get time. This get time method of a JavaScript date returns the number of milliseconds um, since what is it January 1st 1970. That's going to be really helpful because what we're going to do is we'll do this again to see if the, the current time is more than our threshold from the start of the session. We're going to be putting the start of the session in the cookie. Um, so we'll, let's get to that. Uh, these variables are just setting an expiration of the cookie and I'm, I'm having the cookie, cookie expire after 30 minutes. And the idea of that is just that what I don't want to have happen is that somebody visits the site and then visits the site 12 hours or a day later, and that co that start cookie still exists. And then we report to uh, J4 that a um, session, the session duration conversion event happened, even though it was really two different sessions. So setting that 30 minute threshold means that we're looking at it within a given session window. So then here what I'm doing is if exclamation point start cookie, this is where I check to see did the cookie exist? Have we set it yet? Basically is a way of thinking of that. If we didn't set it, that's what the exclamation, the exclamation point means not. So if there doesn't exist a start cookie, then we're going to set the start cookie. And then we'll be done because there's nothing else we want to do. If we haven't actually set the start cookie yet, then it's not possible that the session duration has lasted beyond our threshold. If the start cookie does exist, so that would happen, this script is going to fire more than once, and we'll get into that in, in Tag Manager. So if the start cookie exists, then um, check to see if there's a threshold cookie. This threshold cookie is something that I'm setting. Once the threshold is met, 
the to say, okay, the conversion happened. And the reason for that is that we don't want to keep firing this conversion. We don't want to have that a person, you know, the, the default threshold up here is 120, which is 120 seconds or two minutes. So we, what we don't want to have happen is that we hit that threshold and we keep sending these conversion events over and over again. So we're checking to see that there's not a threshold cookie and the we're getting the start time from the cookie that we set so keep in mind this code down here this else if will only execute if this is this first condition is not true this first condition being that the start cookie doesn't exist so we know the start cookie exists we get the value from the start cookie then we calculate elapsed time which is this now value this is the time in milliseconds since january 1st 1970 we're subtracting the uh, the start time from now and that then we're getting this elapsed time variable the um, so so then if the elapsed time is greater than the duration threshold then we're going to push the session duration conversion event to the data layer I'm not going to if you don't know what that means, then I just recommend researching the data layer. Um, you don't, it's not critical that you understand the data layer to do this on, on your own site. Um, but if you're going to be working with Google Tag Manager much, you really need to understand the data layer. It's essentially, it's a JavaScript variable, a global JavaScript variable that Tag Manager can use um, you can use to, to pass values into Tag Manager, essentially. And Tag Manager is built to sort of read values from the data layer. So we're pushing that event to the data layer, and then I'm setting that threshold cookie. Once I've set that threshold cookie, if this code ex executes again, it's going to skip past this, and it'll just do nothing, because there'll be a start cookie, there'll be a threshold cookie. So the, it'll just get down to the bottom of the script, and it'll end, and it'll do nothing. One thing I didn't point out is this... Uh, this duration threshold because the values that we're working with are in milliseconds, but up here our threshold is in seconds. I'm taking in that, so a millisecond is a, there's a thousand milliseconds to a second, so I'm multiplying it times a thousand. I'm subtracting one just because at 100, it doesn't really matter that much, but at 120 seconds, I want this event to happen at 120 seconds. And since I'm using a greater than down here, I just subtracted one. And you might, might be like, well, you could use greater than and equal, greater than or equals, which is fine. I mean, I could have done that, but instead I have this little minus one. All right, so that's that code. Uh, I'll, again, I'll link to uh, a, a blog post that walks through these steps that has the code itself. I'm going to go into Tag Manager now, and I'll show you the steps to set this up. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is I'm in the 2 Octobers, my um, business's website, and I'll walk you through the steps that we need to do to get this working. So I'm going to create a new tag, um, and there is a convention to name start prefix your tag with the type of tag that it is. Uh, and I'm just going to say, okay, so session duration conversion event, uh, and then I'm going to pick the type custom HTML. Should have copied my code, so we'll hop over and copy that Come back here. I'm going to paste my code in here. Then I'm going to trigger this uh, on the uh, all pages, uh, and I'm going to add another trigger on um, scroll depth. And this scroll depth trigger will fire when a person has scrolled 25, 50, 75, or 100 percent down the page. And the reason I did that is that, like, let's say somebody comes to my website and uh, reads a blog post. They may not go to another page. They may just spend a while reading that blog post. But from my point of view, they've spent more than two minutes on the website. And so I really want that conversion event to happen. I'm going to save that. OK, so now. Remember, what that does is that pushes a event to the data layer. And in Tag Manager, we can listen for data layer events. So I'm going to create a, a new, it's called a custom event tag. And this is just when an event is pushed to the data layer of the name that I specify here, then the trigger will fire. So the name of the event is session duration conversion. And 
uh, another convention is DLE hyphen session duration version. Okay, so now that's gonna, so what this will do is this trigger is gonna fire when this happens. And we're gonna use this for the GA4 event. So I'm gonna save this. And then last but not least, I'm gonna go back to my tags and I'm gonna create a GA4 um, event, pick my configuration tag, and the event name is session duration. And these don't all have to be the same. Uh, you do, if you're listening for the, the data layer event, you need to specify the same name of the event that you're listening for. It's important that that exactly match. Uh, up here, I'm gonna say GA4 event, session and just if you're not familiar event names in GA4 are typically what's called snake case which means lowercase and using underscores instead of spaces and then I'm going to pick the trigger that I just created and I'm going to save that so now um, I'm that's that's actually pretty much it so uh, I still need to set that up as a conversion in GA4 um, before we do that, let's just do a quick preview. We're going to go to twooctobers.com. That's where all of this is working. You can see Tag Assistant's connected. So now if we go here, we'll see. So the my custom HTML tag fired, but my the session duration conversion event hasn't fired yet. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold tight for a minute and wait for that event to happen. Uh, I'll cut that out of the video so you don't have to sit there and wait for two minutes. But um, so we'll we'll wait for a couple minutes and then we'll watch that event fire. Okay, we fast forwarded a couple of minutes. So let's see. I'm gonna go back to my website and what should we do? Well, I don't know. Um, I'll pull up the blog where where we've. Uh, where I cover what we've just been talking about. So here's the um, the blog post. Okay, so now let's go back to Tag Assistant and let's see. Here we go. GA4 session duration conversion event. So that fired on this firing trigger. Uh, you w w let's also look. Um, so the firing trigger was the trigger that we set up. The other thing you'll see is this this tag has fired a few times because we did some scrolling and then probably but once we scrolled is when it fired. So uh, when this fires in and, and every time this fires, it's just going to do the calculation. It isn't necessarily going to send that session duration conversion event. It'll only do that in the condition that more than two minutes has passed or two minutes or more has passed since the, the start of the session. All right, so that worked. We know that that's working. Let's just, I don't know, I like to just go over to GA4. Uh, let's have a look here. If we go to um, the debug view, then we'll see that session duration conversion event. So that's working. The very last thing that we need to do in GA4 is to flag that as a conversion because that was the goal all along. And, and what we can do there, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. What I typically do is wait for the event to show up under events and then flag it as a conversion here. I, that probably won't happen until tomorrow. So the other thing that I can do is I can just go up here and I can create a new conversion event and I would just say, session duration conversion. And I don't actually want to save this because on my website, I don't really want this to count as a conversion. Um, but if I save that, then when that event comes in, it'll be flagged, it'll count as a conversion. And the reason that I prefer to wait for it to show up in events is just so that I don't get it, the name wrong because I have done that and then it, I don't know, uh, I just prefer to wait. So that's it. That's how to set them up. Hope that helps.